let's take a look at uh, lesson 3.1, defining the derivative. So we come back to this idea of tangent lines. And so the tangent lines play an important role, an integral part of us finding the value of the derivative. It's a concept of us trying to figure out what is the value of the rate of change of a function. And so let's take a look at this applet here. You can see this one here. Here's an example here. So here's a function f of x. It's actually x uh, to the power of four minus two x. And so you can see, let me zoom in. The function has characteristic of it's increasing, decreasing, increasing, okay? So I'm not looking at the actual y values, I'm looking at its rate of change. And so what we're gonna learn is that the derivative is a rate of change. It's the rate of change of the function. Is it increasing or decreasing? Decreasing, increasing, it levels off. It actually becomes zero right here because it goes from increasing to decreasing. So when it changes that value, somewhere it has to equal zero. It's kind of like the intermediate value theorem where it was increasing and then decreasing. So somewhere it, the rate of change had to be zero. And so the way we do that rate of change is with that tangent line. So we spent so much time studying the tangent line and coming up with an equation because the equation of the tangent line becomes, helps us to figure out what the derivative is, its rate of change. And so to find the rate of change, what we do is if we are able to calculate the slope of the tangent line at any point, that's the derivative, that's the rate of change, that's the derivative at that value. So what's the derivative at one? You'll see right here, it looks like it's positive, it's increasing. Now, what is it increasing at? One, two, three, it all depends on the steepness. And so you can see the slope here. And so the value of the slope of that tangent line tells you how fast the function's increasing or decreasing. And so the idea is, that there's these relationships in our world that are modeled by functions. And then we can use derivatives to then interpret those functions, how fast they're increasing or decreasing. We'll look at some applications of that. So you can start thinking about it. And so in order for us to calculate that, we revisit the slope of a tangent line. And we do that through what we call the difference quotient, right? You find a point on the function and then a point very close to that point, right? And that's what this notation is. These are the same idea here. If you look carefully, f of x minus f of a or x minus a. And then if we're getting close to, to a, right, just alter it just a little bit by a value of h, what we call an increment of h, right? So it's a and then a plus h, just a little bit ahead of the value of a. And we're going to compare those two points and find the slope of the line between those two points. And you end up with um, this difference quotient here. So these are, um, the, they are um, similar. I mean, they look different, but they're calculating the same thing. Just one with respect to two points, X and A, and then this one to the point A and A plus H, which means just a little bit off of A, an increment of H. And so that's what uh, we're evaluating here. And you can see, Here's f a and f uh, f of a x and f of x, and so we just find the slope of between that. But what we're really trying to do, again, is you compare them. They're the same thing. The only our only thing different is our representation. Instead of saying x, we say a plus h. That at some point, just a little bit off of a. And so those those um, those values are uh, equivalent. Uh, they get us the same. Um, calculation for slope just in two different ways, okay? And so I don't want you to be confused by that. And then to find the exact value at a point, we actually then find the limit of that function as h approaches zero, meaning that we get that distance really close to a to almost being zero, or that it x approaches a. Again, these are equivalent statements. So I just want to make sure you get an idea which one makes more sense to you as you as you uh, manage that, but they're equivalent statements. And this example is just with the square root of x and us trying to figure out as you get closer and closer to it. So that leads us to the definition, right? The slope of the tangent line is the limit. So again, it's one of these two equivalent, equivalently, right? You can define it this way. 
So again, I want to make sure we avoid some of that confusion as you uh, look at that. And then you just went through all these examples of finding it. You can kind of just, even if you don't know what you're doing sometimes, you just plug into the equation. But I really want you thinking about what are those equations there. And so you can then just follow along and say, we're actually calculating the limit. That's why we need limits. That's why the magic of limits come into place for us to find that value, the derivative at that point, because we're interested in the rate of change, how fast something is increasing or decreasing, or is it not increasing or decreasing? Is it the value zero? And so that's what we're doing in this lesson. And that's why, again, it's this idea of revisiting the tangent line, because that's what we were doing without telling you we were doing uh, derivatives or starting our calculus. And again, some of the um, the algebra, again, follows, uh, you can see in this example, a little bit more complex algebra to find the limit if f of x is 1 over x compared to x squared. It's a little bit easier to actually evaluate the limit, but we can do it. Again, we use the techniques we used in unit two to evaluate um, those limits. And so we then have a notation, f. this is called f prime, that little uh, exclamation uh, uh, or the, uh, what do you call that? The quote, single quote, right? Um, we have, then we say, what is the derivative at a specific point? Not right here. What's the derivative here? What's the derivative here? At what point, right? And so that's what this language is now saying. What's the derivative f prime of a? And then you apply this function for, for a. Again, you could use either of these definitions here, depending on kind of the setup of the situation as we do that. But again, now it's this language here of what we go, what's the derivative at a point? And we call that process differentiation. And so you'll, that's what we spend our time in unit three doing is finding the derivative of a function. So you can see here, here's your function, find the derivative at x equals two. That's what we're, oops, I don't know why that happened, but that's what uh, we're looking at. Where was it? Right here, I clicked it. I don't know why it keeps jumping. Apologize for that. We'll jump over to right here. Oh, there's the solution. So you can see at x equal to, then you actually have a value plugged into there. And then you find the limit. And then you can see what the value of the, what is the derivative at that point, f prime of two. So you want to make sure, again, you go through those definitions. That's an important process here of calculating the derivative. Now, um, what this gets leads us to is velocity. Velocity, again, for those who have taken physics, have a uh, better understanding of that, or the average velocity, how fast an object's moving. It's, um, we have average or it's instantaneous velocity. And so a velocity is a rate of change. So guess what? It's a derivative. It's the derivative of what we call the position function. Like where is the object at a certain time? And so it's at point A and point B. How fast did it move from point A to point B? We can calculate that by using the derivative. We can calculate that, right? S of T many times is gonna be what stands for the position function. And so we then expand our derivative, not just to any function, but now to a position function and then finding the velocity. And hence you have these problems of estimating velocity. You also see some, here's a classic example from physics or, or science. Uh, of a falling object has a pretty standard position function and we can find the velocity at any time after it's been dropped because you have the function. The derivative of the, of the position function is the velocity, gives you a velocity. And so if you find it at a point, it's called the instantaneous rate of change. Uh, what else was in here? You can also, again, depending upon what the function is, you can find the rate of change, how fast temperature is increasing, uh, like if we had a function for COVID cases, how fast it's increasing or decreasing, do we anticipate it leveling off, right? Having zero rate of change, uh, profit functions for business situations, you have costs and profits. So there's a lot of places where derivatives that apply um, to us. But again, it all boils down to those quotient equations, but want to make sure you understand, again, that they're equivalent they're, oh, this is at a point here again, they're equivalent functions.